Hello, my name is Colin Doyle, and I'm a consulting engineer at Juniper Networks, covering major accounts in the Pacific Northwest. Today, I will be introducing you to the joint Perero Juniper DDoS solution and highlighting how it can improve your ability to mitigate DDoS attacks while dramatically reducing the cost of these capabilities. Full disclosure, part of me always wants to jump right to the demo because it's just so cool to see this solution in action. But before we dive into that, I do want to level set on some DDoS concepts and review the elements of our solution to provide context. First off, we all know what a DDoS attack is, right? A bad actor targets an internet connected service with more traffic than it can handle and renders it unusable. It's not quite that simple. But we certainly hear about the big attacks that generate terabytes of data and bring down a global service. These so-called volumetric attacks are what most folks think about when they think DDoS. But not all DDoS attacks are volumetric, and they certainly aren't all global in scale. And by the way, if any of you are wondering about the $150 DDoS attack cost on the screen, it's not some weighted average based on resource calculations. There are actual menus for these sorts of things. And yes, you are reading this correctly. These products do come with 24-7 support. So just how many DDoS attacks are taking place at any given moment? Well. A lot, pretty much everywhere. But there's more to this than meets the eye. Let's dig a bit deeper and expand the event values and take a look at bandwidth and event categories. Here we can see the volumetric attacks that are commonly associated with DDoS. We also see protocol attacks that are directed at a specific application or increasingly at a specific element of an application. There's TCP connection attacks that attempt to use up all the connections for a specific service. And there's amplification attacks that use a small request for information, typically NTP or DNS, to return a much larger amount of data in the response. So why is this important? There's a constant hum of DDoS attacks on the internet, and the huge terabyte volumetric attacks are the exception, not the rule. In fact, as protocol and TCP connection attacks become more sophisticated, attackers are able to impact target services with just a few attacking machines and a relatively low volume of traffic. Most DDoS solutions use a combination of NetFlow for data collection, flow spec or scrubbing centers for mitigation, and a detection engine that matches known and learned attack patterns. These legacy solutions can be effective with large volumetric attacks, but they have some fairly significant drawbacks, particularly in the face of evolving attack methods. First, detection. NetFlow only gives you header information, IP, ports, packet length, and protocol. No payload data. As a result, there's an enormous amount of detail that the detection engine simply never sees. Consider that to a target system, the packets received during an NTP or DNS attack look legitimate. Let's say an attacker targets your WAN router with a DNS DDoS attack. If your organization uses one of the DNS servers linked to this attack, a flow-based solution would render it unreachable because it has no way to differentiate between legitimate DNS replies and spoofed ones. Flow spec and scrubbing centers in turn suffer from this lack of information when mitigating an attack. Even if more information is available, flow spec can only implement layer 3 filters and most scrubbing centers only analyze header information. Simply put, if NetFlow is the garbage in, then the mitigation filters that are implemented by these mitigation tools are the garbage out. To address the need for more information, our solution uses packet mirroring instead of flows. This provides immediate forwarding of the header and payload at a 1 to 1000 sample rate that scales with an attack. On the mitigation side, we use NetConf to push configuration to an ephemeral database on the router in near real time. The powerful flexible match filtering capabilities of Juniper MX routers allow for rules that can match not only header information, but data contained within the packet payload. This is it. This is what sets the Carrero Juniper solution apart. We are able to combine the best-in-class attack detection capabilities of Carrero with the best-in-class router capabilities of Juniper. By inspecting mirrored packets, we are able to detect attacks other solutions cannot. By using flexible match filters, we can mitigate attacks at a granularity other solutions cannot. And we do all of this without a separate hardware appliance or network agents and we do it in line. The Carrero Juniper DDoS solution has four primary components. At the top, we have pretty much any MX router we sell, from the 20 gigabit MX150 all the way up to the 80 terabit MX2020. Below that are the suite of Carrero tools that comprise the threat detection director. 
The first VM is the Network Threat Detector. The MX sends sampled traffic to the NTD where it is evaluated based on the policies defined by the central management system. The CMS acts as the policy engine for the solution, telling the NTD what constitutes an attack and receiving information about attacks in return. When an attack is detected, the CMS sends mitigation instructions to the Secure Watch Analytics VM. Under the hood, the SWA is just a captive Splunk instance, consuming mitigation instructions from the CMS, creating and pushing filters to the MX via NetConf, and parsing telemetry from the MX so that administrators have real-time performance data. For service providers, the solution can optionally include the Secure Service Portal, offering operator and multi-tenant resource access. During normal operation, we see mirrored packets being sent to the NTD at a 1 to 1,000 sample rate. We also see streaming telemetry being sent to the SWA. Now let's start an attack. Our mirroring is now forwarding attack packets to the NTD. These packets are identified based on policy and the CMS is notified. The CMS evaluates the attack and determines what mitigation steps must be implemented on the MX. It sends instructions to the SWA, which creates filters based on the mitigation instructions received from the CMS and pushes them to the ephemeral database on the MX using NetConf. The flexible packet filters now drop the attack traffic while continuing to allow legitimate traffic through. Let's say that in our example, the MX was being hit by an NTP monlist attack. NTP has a feature that allows administrators to query for traffic counts of connected clients. This feature can be exploited to generate an enormous amount of traffic from a relatively small number of queries. This attack cannot be identified by the header information alone. The NTP payload must be inspected and the request code must be processed. And of course, this is only useful if your mitigation tool can build a filter for an NTP packet that contains the monlist request code. One final thing before we get into the demo. Just in case you're wondering what it takes to integrate the Carrera solution with the Juniper router, here's the minimum configuration required. That's it. 22 set commands. No services card or specialized components. Just a bit of configuration. Now let's see this in action. For this demonstration, I will be using what we call a blueprint in our Cloud Lab environment. This blueprint consists of the Carrero Threat Defense Director Solution, two virtual MX routers, and an Ixia network emulator. In our workspace, we see the TDD elements. There's the Network Threat Detector, Central Management System, and Secure Watch Analytics nodes. There is also a Secure Service Portal, but in the interest of time, I will be skipping multi-tenancy features. The Ixia nodes represent host connections and will be used to generate traffic flows across the VMX routers. Nodes P1 and P3, here at the top, will act as traffic sources, and nodes P2 and P4 are destinations. The Secure Watch Analytics node is receiving telemetry information from the VMX routers. We can see a bit of flow testing I did while preparing this demo, but our current flow rate is zero. On the Ixia, I have some predefined flows. One pushes legitimate traffic, while the others each simulate a different type of DDoS attack. Finally, I have an open console on VMX1 and an interface traffic monitor running. In this lab, GE002 is our internet link, and GE003 is our downstream link. You can also look at the ephemeral database configuration for Carrero and confirm that no rules are currently defined. I'll now turn on a legitimate traffic flow. Looking at the console in the VMX, we now see input traffic on GE002 and output traffic on GE003. Note that the input and output values match. We'll also see this flow in the SWA with no mitigation actions in progress. We can take a little bit of time for this to refresh, but mitigation actions will be seen immediately when present. Now, do you remember the NTP monlist attack I mentioned in the presentation? Let's simulate that attack.
Now as I start this flow, I'd like for you to watch down here at the bottom. The attack has started, and very shortly we will see drop packets. There we go. Now if we move back to the SWA, we will also see the corresponding block action. We can also see some filter information used to configure our rule on the VMX. Let's go look at that rule. Looking at the ephemeral configuration, we see the flexible match rule that is inspecting the NTP packet for the mon list attribute at layer 4. We can also check the firewall counters to verify policy drops. Looking at our traffic flows, we can see that our input packets on GE002 are far outpacing our output packets on GE003. Now let's start a SYN flood attack. The reason why I'm using these two DDoS attacks specifically is because they highlight just how advanced the Juniper Carrero solution is. Look at the rules used to mitigate these attacks. We're checking for specific bits in the packet payload and inspecting TCP header flags. Neither of these filters are possible with flow-based detection or flow spec mitigation. And while a scrubbing center may be able to provide additional detection capabilities beyond flows, they can be quite expensive and often require manual steps for mitigation. At Juniper, our motto is engineering simplicity. This solution isn't just about better capabilities than our competitors. It's about automating those capabilities to eliminate the need for manual mitigation. It's about reducing operational costs by integrating a best-in-class router. It's about presenting information intuitively so that when you need it, you don't have to go digging around. It's about providing a solution that you can engineer with, not one that you need to engineer around. Thank you for your time.